Hey YouTube, this is Aaron and the 16-bit workshop, or I'll call it something like that anyway. Since this is the first video, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube recently, um, videos from people like uh, Perry Fractic and his Retro Recipes, or Retro Man Cave, um, Nostalgia Nerd. Um, I guess I got there via the sort of gateway drug that is Techmoan, um, EV Blog, uh, and a couple of others. And I sort of gravitated towards retro computing because I really miss retro computing. Um, I really miss when I was a kid and computers were fun and simple. Anyway, after watching a bunch of those videos, we went to the um, National Museum of Computing History in Cambridge. Uh, they have like, all of the old 8-bit, 16-bit micros, um, consoles from the 70s through the 80s, the 90s, all hooked up. You can play with them all. It's a fantastic place to go. Um, you really should go if you're in the UK. Anyway, that, that all really, really made me miss my Amiga 500 that I had as a kid, um, which I sold in, I guess, the mid-90s um, to fund my first PC, uh, which is a terrible mistake. Slippery slope from there. But anyway, I, I went looking on eBay for an Amiga 500, um, and I found one about an hour away. It was £40, so um, I pulled the trigger and, and bought one. Um, I haven't opened the box yet. I All I know is that it's the Cartoon Classics pack, which I'm pretty sure is the pack I had as a kid. Um, I should ask my parents, they'll, they'll remember for sure. Um, and two big boxes of accessories, like joysticks and, and games and stuff that I, I haven't been through yet. So I figured, uh, why not video unboxing it? Um, we'll open it up, see if it still works. Um, we'll probably crack it open and see what's inside it and make sure there's no you know nasty surprises. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we've got planned. So let's get on and crack this thing open. All right, guys, well, you know, already one piece has fallen off the box, but the box has definitely seen better days. Um, looks like it's been sat in the attic for a long time and uh, kind of smells like it smoked 20 a day for quite a bit of that time. But um, let's open it up and see what's inside. So on the outside you have this, this sleeve which was basically just added by Commodore UK um, in the packs that they built. And then you know, Cartoon Classics pack um, with all of those 90s hits like The Simpsons, Lemmings, which God, I loved Lemmings. Let's put that out of the way down there. And let's get into the meat of the thing, which uh, is the box itself. Um, do you know, I, I don't remember this box at all from a kid. Um, you know, I remember the, the cartoon packs. But uh, this is, is the real box, I guess. If you bought it with no pack, this is what you got. So let's see what we've got inside. And we have got Captain Planet and the Planeteers, which um, I don't think I ever watched as a kid. But uh, you know, one disc, 1990. Deluxe Paint 3, because um, you know you had to be able to justify this to your parents, right? You know, Mom, I'll do my homework on it. It's probably what I said too. Um, I was watching an interview with uh, the then managing director of, of Commodore UK who said that, you know, these packs they put together, they had to keep two productivity apps in them just so that kids could justify them to their parents. Um, it's totally true. Lemmings, which, uh, let's see, is a disc in here? Yeah, well, there's a disc. Free with Commodore promotion pack, so, you know, it's a real deal. I remember floppy disks. I miss them. Um, and The Simpsons, which I think I remember playing like once. And um, yeah, I was terrible at it because I've always been terrible at video games. We've got the original Polystyrene, 
the A520 RF modulator, which uh, this is what I used to, you know, hook my Commodore up to a TV because I wasn't fancy enough for a monitor. So it's got the, um, you know, the video in, audio in, video out, RF out. That was what I used because, you know, I wasn't fancy. And we have an incredibly yellow Amiga 500. Let's see what else we've got first. Uh, ah, interesting. We have a video to SCART adapter um, for the composite. It's going to be handy because uh, I'm not sure I have anything with an RF in anymore. I probably do, but um, I definitely have stuff with SCART in. I don't have a scan doubler yet, so I can't actually hook this up to you know, a modern LCD monitor. And we have a power supply that is is so yellow it's brown. Um, wow, that's that's quite. It's, I don't know if the color comes out in the camera, but that is quite brown, and it kind of looks like someone's had at it with a soldering iron. But uh, you know, it's very brown. Then we have. Money shot. The Amiga 500 in all its incredibly brown glory. Um, they weren't this color originally. They were not. Nicotine yellow, I think, is this color. Um, you know, they were they were this color originally, which uh, is yep. Wow, that's pretty. Pretty brown. Um, that's the UV in, in sunlight is, you know, a large part responsible for that. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I'll try and get a picture of it. But where the shadows were, the sunlight was obviously coming from this direction, and all the shadows on the keys are like the original color. Um, it's basically old ABS plastic breaking down. Um, you can retro bright them, which is uh, hydrogen peroxide. Basically, you bleach it white effectively. Uh, which lasts a while, and we might look into that. Um, I think there's a Kickstarter for a replacement A500 case that maybe that'll come to fruition. But, uh, you know, for now, we'll, we should probably leave it brown for a bit. Uh, at least until we know if it works. Let's see what we got underneath. So, uh, I guess this is uh, manufactured... I'm not actually sure if that's the main infantry date, 104684. But um, it's definitely been a part because um, it's, it's missing a screw and the uh, warranty is, is void. So, so we're not taking that back for repair. But, um, let's see what we've got in the expansion bay. This proclaims to have um, one meg of RAM, so I am assuming, yep. It's got the old one meg RAM expansion, well, half meg RAM expansion. Let's leave this out carefully. There we go. So, this was built, I guess, the week commencing week 23, 1991. Um, well, it's pretty old. Um, that's what, 26 years old? Um, the shield is, is like soldered in place down this end, I think. Yeah. So, but these had a battery back clock in them. And I don't know if I'll be able to get a shot, but... You know, the battery looks a little fuzzy. Um, doesn't look like, you know, it might have leaked onto this, but it doesn't look like it's it's hit the board at all, so inside the actual computer, so that's good. The, the computer should be safe even if this is toast. Um, and let's face it, I'm probably going to stick some kind of an accelerator card in this, so this would become redundant, right? Um, 
We'll see. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to fire it up and see if this actually functions as it is. So we'll put that back in. Uh, and that's about it. I know everything else inside these machines is, is basically covered by RF shield. Um, so, yeah. I guess next will be... Well, I can either take the case off or plug it in and see if it works. What do you guys think? Um, I think we might plug it in and see if it works. But we do have two more boxes of stuff to go through before that. So, uh, yeah. We'll get to that. Alright, so... This, which you can see part of, I guess, is the first big box of stuff. Um, let's see what we've got. We have got the manual for uh, Amos the Creator, which... You know, I don't actually remember. I think I remember using Amos, but... Um, it was like basic for game programming. The Amiga was... Uh, not the first machine I learned to program on because I learned basic on the ZX Spectrum and the uh, BBC Micro at school. Um, by the time I had the Amiga, I sort of progressed to some 68000 assembler and some C. Um, it was never that great at 68000 assembler. I'm a, you know, a C and C++ kind of guy, but. Uh, I was in my teens, so. Got the manuals, uh, the wiring guide from the plug. It's important. The A520 user manual, the A500 user manual. Some of you will win. I think it's too late. Oh, wow. Uh, no, this is a receipt for uh, Man United Soccer for the Amiga. Uh, Possibly a mouse for 4498 in February 94 by the look of it. Um, Future Zone Stores Limited Leicester. Amiga DOS 1.3, Kickstart 1.3. I had a 500 plus, so um, I had the first of the, you know, slightly newer generation of machines, but. Uh, that mouse pad, we, um, we, uh, as Barry Fracti would say, let's go on eBay. Uh, Techno Plus Amiga Atari switchable mouse, that was what the receipt was for, which, um, I particularly like how the box is here, but the mouse is here, so, for some reason we kept the box, but, uh, did not put the mouse back in the box. Ah, oh, mouse balls. That was fun in my first job, going out cleaning mouse balls because, you know, people couldn't do it themselves. But hey, that's what we charged uh, maintenance for. Oh yeah, 20 years of scummy fur built up in there. That's going to need cleaning. Uh, but it's, it's got a mouse because there wasn't one in the box, so I was a little bit concerned about that. Ah, uh, what, um... Oh, I am not sure. Maybe it's two DB9s to DB25? Serial port splitter, maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe maybe one of you knows. I'll, I'll crack it open. And... Ah, hell, let's crack it open right now. And then let's see what's inside it, shall we? These things usually just... Plastic, but uh, but those are the noises that on camera sound like I'm just smashing my way in here. It's freak me out when I hear them. Oh, a little board, and it is pretty much just straight through. There's no no passives, no actives, nothing. So yeah, I don't know. 
But I mean, someone paid good money for it, whatever it is. Um, why not treat your mouse to a designer mouse pad with some dude's abs? Um, or a kitten. Proof that pictures of cats were popular way before that. Oh, it's naked ladies too. Uh, Power mouse. Hold on. That's this. So this isn't the Techno Plus mouse. I was wrong. They had two mice. And we have some discs. Independence Day. Uh, Mission Disc 3, so it's not much use to us. Mouse drivers for DOS. Uh, Windows 3.1. If you have any questions or comments, please give us a call. Wonder if the number still answers. Oh, yeah. I'm getting into the meat of it now. A joystick. Quick shot to turbo. Oh yeah. Digital goodness. None of that analog rubbish. And another joystick. Uh, it is um, completely unnamed. It's missing a sucker. And it feels mushy. Anyone recognize that one? I don't. We have a growing collection of joysticks, it seems, because uh, now there is a joy pad. Now, how this is in frame. Oh. I, I, I don't. Can, can you see that? That's. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I want to know. And oh, that feels like proper mush. It's got a little bit smashed out of the side of it as well. So it's probably seen some, you know, hard Techno Plus branded, um, like the mouse that uh, isn't in that box. And last but not least, oh no, 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 there's more. We have a cable. We have. Aerial cable, I guess. Oh, no. An aerial cable and an audio phono splitter. And one that didn't survive, apparently. Ah, oh, yeah. Poor quick shot joystick has been beaten to death. I think that has been. We'll just put that. Uh, Right back in there. And uh, let's get the next box. I'm really enjoying this. And I bet you guys, this is probably dull as ditch water, but uh, I am getting a serious kick out of this. Maybe more space to put stuff um, that's in frame. But uh, Defender of the Crown, Mirasoft, Sega version. Weighty. It's got some heft to it. I'll be honest. I opened this box while I was there picking it up, and this was the first thing I saw. That was my favorite game. Possibly ever. Love this game. Oh, I really hope the discs are inside, because I didn't actually check that. Oh, yeah. Discs. Manual. discs, workbench 1.3, oh that's, that's handy actually, <laughs> you know I didn't see them in the box and I was like, uh, it's going to be a problem if there's no workbench discs, again, what am I saying, I've got to put an accelerator cut on this thing I'm sure, copiers because <laughs> everybody needed two discs of disc copiers because that's what I did at school, Amigas, Fonts at Pro. 
Graham Gooch World Class Cricket. We probably won't be playing. Dyna Blaster. International Ice Hockey. This person likes sports games. Apparently. I don't know if we're going to go through everything, but uh, Cannon Fodder. Formula One Grand Prix. Seriously, one of my favorite games of the game. Pen Pal Extras. I don't know, we're still checking that out. Road Rash. Disc 2, no Disc 1. Desert Strike. Oh, this is just honest to me. This is like going back in time. Micro Machines, Road Rash, Desert Strike, Gods. Lombard RAC Rally, back when it was called Lombard RAC Rally. Road Rash, Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. Even though that was a game. Road Rash, again, Deluxe, Deluxe Bank 3. Gold Max. Lotus Turbo 2. With the passwords written on it. <laughs> uh, and the cheat. Turpentine for infinite time. Pen Pal Program. Ten of Fodder. Disc 3. Puggles. Mm. Intrigued. Pro Count. So we had to pretend to do some work on this, right? Maze PD Games Disc. <laughs> there was a shop where I grew up in York. Um, downstairs was like regular computer shop. And when you went upstairs, it was just stacks and stacks of this stuff. Um, there was no internet, you know, back in like 19... Well, there was an internet in 1994, but I didn't have it. Um, I think the first time I got a modem hooked up was on the PC, so I never dialed into an Amiga bulletin board. Dialed into plenty of PC bulletin boards, but... Uh, so that was how you got PD stuff. Um, cover discs... Amiga Format, I used to buy that every month. Amiga Computing, Amiga Shopper. God, see you Amiga. Yeah, man, it's just... Honestly, this is like stepping back in time for me. Uh, music keyboard, more, more cover discs. Snap maps, I'll, I'll yell if anything comes, you know. Pops out that I remember, but Relokick 1.3. Backwards compatibility to A500 plus A6000. Extra zero there and A1200 on it. Because I had the 500 plus. And so there were some games and demos that did not work because we had Fat Agnes, I think, rather than Agnes. Um, a friend of mine had the A600. Another friend had an A1200 because they had money. Um, I really want to pick up an A1200 right now, but they are going for just stupid money on eBay. Like, £400 was the last one I missed out on. Though I did have the monitor. Uh, a video titler. That'll come in handy. I reckon I can edit this YouTube video. Uh, more, more cover discs. The Lion King. Odyssey. Ah, oh, the shareware collection. Assembler, everything you need to make a start in assembly language. We'll be checking that out. And Blitz Basic, which I also remember. Ah, it's just, you know. Computers became my job, and they become a lot less fun. This is real 3D, back when this stuff was fun. Hanging out with my mates, and, you know, clearly we were the nerdy, geeky kids, right? So, there were no girls involved, it was just us and computers. Um, don't feel bad for me. Gave me a good life. Oh, there is just this this box, it's like a tall box, and it is just rammed full of stuff. Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo, Amiga, high tech software. Uh, the Kit Squad cheats for New Zealand story on the title screen before pressing fire. Flyer, no, flyer, Be before pressing fire. Hmm. Cheats for the New Zealand story. On the title screen, before pressing fire to start, type Fluffy Kiwis to obtain an infinite number of lives. Pressing help enables you to advance levels. This will come in handy. Maybe. Arkanoid. Grand Prix. Reference card. And some of the manual. I think that's because the rest of it is uh, seen better days. This was back when... Told you everything about everything in the manual for the game. 
You buy software these days, it doesn't like expensive software doesn't come with a manual that big. Now I just sound old, right? Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo. Uh, Archipelagos? I don't remember that one. It got 94% and it's a 3D game. I'm running through this fast because you guys don't want to see me at open fun school for for the under fives. So ideal. Maybe a little advance for me. Mm. Teddy paint Teddy's house. Learn about colours by painting Teddy's house. Yeah. I, I, I hate painting and decorating, so... The trouble with being an adult is you have to do that stuff for yourself. Mm, yeah, there's ice hockey, international ice hockey. God, I can't believe these people kept the boxes for everything, man. Amos the Creator, that is a weighty box. That is a, another big manual. Someone had dreams of being the next, you know, Micro Pros or Epic Games. Deluxe Paint 4. Ooh, someone splashed out for the full thing, man. This is a big box. Big box. Supports Workbench 1.3 and 2, Omega 500, 1000, 1500, 2000, and 3000 computers. I always wanted an Omega 3000. If I find one on eBay, I am so buying one. If I find one on eBay that's affordable, I think. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. <laughs> yeah. They had some young kids, I'm guessing. Because they got, you know, you go from Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends to the Chaos Engine. So either this machine lived a long life, or they had more than one child. Um, I don't know which it was, to be honest. I didn't ask. What else we got? Overdrive, Team 17. I remember what the Team 17 title is. Not that one. Uh, this game is no pushover, featuring Giant and his buddy Colin Curley. You just don't get games like this anymore. Premier Manager. We will not be playing that. Manchester United, Premier League Champions. We will not be playing that either. Street Fighter 2. I sucked at this. I still suck at this. Um, I'll, I'll button mash. That's all I can ever do. Pinball. Pinball, pinball fantasies. Mm -hmm. uh, um, interesting. Pinball fantasies. Do they come in two boxes or do they have two copies? I don't know. Nick Faldo's Championship Golf. Uh, we will not be doing that either. And Dino Blaster, which is basically Bomberman, I think. Uh, yes, it is. Basically, Bomberman. And then a few more bits and pieces. What have we got? Um, Turbo Outrun. Yep. Robocop. Now this is when we were getting into the budget games. Yes, I guess. The cardboard boxes are <laughs> smaller. Uh, Arkanoid. Um, yeah, way less fancy. So at the end of its lifespan, I suppose. New Zealand story. Um, there we go. It's cheap for that. And that is everything. That is a massive pile of stuff. Yeah, let me, uh, you see? Yeah, that is a huge pile of stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to do with most of it. I really, really want to get this thing hooked up and working. Um, so uh, I guess I'm going to work on that. Uh, I'm going to need to figure out the cables and stuff because I have this Samsung screen in here, but uh, no power on this side of the office because um, yeah, this is my actual office where I actually work. So um, yeah, figure that out, and uh, I'll come back to you. All right, so we've we've unboxed everything. Um, I was gonna plug it in, turn it on, do everything in this video, but I did this like a half hour of of content of me unboxing stuff, which um, 
which, which might turn out to be a little dull, but hey, this is my first time, so go easy on me. Um, and I think in the next video, I'll actually get this hooked up and working. I need to tidy up the mountain of stuff I just piled on the desk. Um, find the cables, run the power cords, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave you here, and hopefully I'll get the next video up uh, in a couple of days. Um, and yeah, and at the very end of this, maybe enjoy a little outtake. So, see you next time. Bye.